like, comment, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching. All right, guys. So I am finally getting around to editing down the raw footage from the trial of Elihio Bishop, a.k.a. Nature Boy, a.k.a. Chief Hoppa John Hot Pocket, a.k.a. Chief Administrative Segregation, a.k.a. Chief Life in Prison Without the Possibility of Parole Plus 10 Years. This will be February 26th, 2024. I will be interjecting where I see fit. However, I'm going to try to do very little commentary on this one. So guys, let's get into it. I'm going to address all the counts, but I'm going to really focus on counts three, four, and five. Okay. Uh, counts three, four, and five deal with the uh, re revenge porn allegation. And I'm going to kind of deal with sort of a narrow issue, um, sort of. Uh, one is I understand that the court has to look at it in the light most favorable to the state. And also understand uh, that you're looking to see if there's been any evidence presented of that. Uh, but in this particular case, Judge, the, the state has failed to provide evidence that the defendant caused as the allegation uh, as the indictment states or that he did anything to um, have these videos be placed on Twitter or on social media. Uh, the state was able to go through his house and obtain 12 devices. Out of those 12 devices, none of those vi devices has the state put in evidence showing that he ever actually even possessed it. Uh, they sent a search warrant to our subpoena to Twitter. There's no evidence that they put in that shows a business record from Twitter that says that this defendant was the person who actually uploaded the device, the, um, the videos to Twitter. Uh, there's also nothing that shows that he caused them to be uh, uploaded to Twitter. Uh, additionally, there would be something called venue that would be necessary in this case. And the, for purposes of it, the state has not presented a witness uh, that I can recall here, and I've kind of kept checking over there where they've indicated, hey, by the way, uh, this happened within DeKalb County for any of the counts, actually. So I would argue for one through five, the state has failed to prove venue uh, in DeKalb County because there's nothing that has testified that this happened, if it ever happened, within DeKalb County. Uh, so venue would be one of the arguments. But for count three, four, or five, uh, there's nothing to show that it came from a device that uh, would have belonged to the defendant other than it was on the defendant's account. I would also ask the court to consider that when Janae Newell testified, who's the complainant in this case, that she indicated that she gave the defendant consent in order to uh, record these uh, videos and originally to place these videos online. She never said that she withdrew consent. There's been no evidence that the videos uh, came down and were placed back online uh, again by the defendant without her consent. Uh, there's been no evidence that he did it for purposes that, first of all, that he did it at all, but he did it for purposes of harassment uh, to her. Uh, but again, she's testified that these videos were placed online. But again, the state has to go back, and I would have imagined they would have had a device to say, well, this item was on his cell phone or his computer. We don't have that. That's not an evidence. Uh, and that it went to his Twitter account from a device that he possessed within the Cap County, and they don't have that. They don't have an IP address, they don't have a MAC address, they don't have anything that's supported other than, let's believe that he posted it to his social media because somebody said, well, he always posts things to his social media. Uh, that That's not sufficient evidence, so I'm asking the court to dismiss counts three, four, and five. Uh, additionally, I would ask the court to dismiss the rape count as well because as the court has probably heard by now, that this alleged victim has not in any way said that Mr. Bishop raped her or has never actually used the word of rape. She's given numerous interviews. Uh, she's given an interview uh, to law enforcement. She's given an interview when she originally met with uh, the uh, DeKalb Uniform Officer Hugh. Uh, she has uh, met with law enforcement after that. Uh, she's given a total of four or five different interviews and she used the word uh, lovemaking. She's never used uh, any evidence that, she, that he allegedly forced her uh, to do anything. Uh, I know the state's contention is that he uh, did this by some type of 
mental <laughs> force or duress or something along those lines. There's been no evidence that she said, well, he did this because uh, I was afraid that he was going to beat me or something. There, actually, she hasn't even given any evidence that he ever hit her uh, or hurt her in any way. She's talked about other people doing it, but not this particular defendant. So, Judge, I, I would argue that the state has failed to meet on a couple different grounds. One being there's, they have not met venue. They have not proved this happened within the De- DeKalb County. Uh, I don't think there's been a witness to say that this house was within the parameters of DeKalb County. Um, so you can look back at the transcript and see that, that it has been placed, but I don't think they have. Second, the uh, device, uh, there's nothing that says that this defendant possessed the device and that this, the videos were ever in his control. Uh, thirdly, there's nothing from Twitter that shows that it came from a device that he possessed or controlled or that when the device was placed, uh, that it, it came from here within DeKalb County. Fourthly, uh, that these videos were uh, sent to Twitter after uh, Ms. Newell left the house, which that would be necessary because she said that while she was at the house, uh, she had permission and control. That, that date would be a controlling date, and that date has not been put in evidence. Uh, I would have generally expected that something from social media would have been put in that would have uh, controlled that. So, Judge, we would ask the court to dismiss uh, this case against Mr. Bishop. Uh, we understand the state has arrested, and if they haven't put in venue, obviously that's a fatal flaw for purposes of their case. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Response? I ain't even finna hold y'all, but when Robert Booker went up there after the state rested their case and it was the defense's turn to put on their defense and he asked to dismiss the charges, you know, the revenge corn and the R word charge, he was adamant that the state had not met their burden. And I was just like, okay, what in the hell, Mary, is he talking about? Because the state has certainly produced enough evidence to show that there was a grape, that there was false imprisonment, and that there was also revenge corn. Now, at this point, the prosecution had called what I'm going to consider very credible witnesses. Rick Allen Ross, Amanda Planchard, Aaron Dixon, Kendra Carter, Courtney P. Townsend, Velvet Marquez, and Janae Noel. In addition to all of its witnesses, they had on tape Elihio Bishop, aka Nature Boy, in his own interrogation stating that the victim says no. So they did present quite a bit of evidence and proof to prove all charges sought against him. Thank you. Response? Just briefly, both law enforcement witnesses testified the Arbor Chase home was within the confines of DeKalb County. Kendra testified that all of this happened at the Arbor Chase residence, as did Janae. Venue's been proven with all counts, and with respect to counts three through five, venue may be proven by circumstantial evidence, which shows that all of the social media posting and activity took place in Mr. Bishop's residence, which was at the Arbor Chase house, which was in DeKalb County. So venue's been established, everything else is issues for the jury, and we, unless the court has other specific questions, I ask the court to deny the motion. No, I mean, I specifically recall venue being addressed by the witnesses. Um, the only issue is, uh, was there testimony, and I think there was, I'm trying to recall, was there testimony that nothing was posted online unless it was done with his approval? I'm, I'm vaguely remembering that specifically. Yeah. Uh, yes, that was okay. several different okay. All right, then given that, I, I, yeah, sure, of course. Wouldn't that still have to be shown that that happened within DeKalb County? And those people said nothing was placed online unless it got its approval. They didn't say that they posted any porn videos online. For him. They didn't say that he posted any porn videos. And that we have, because this, the state has broadened the scope so much on this case beyond March 24, 2022, we're looking all the way back to 2017. There, there have been no witnesses that have said that after March 24, 2022, that this defendant or they posted things on his behalf, and we don't have any evidence that these videos were posted after 
March 24, 2022. That's a bright line date. That date is necessary. There's nothing. There's no specific from Twitter. There's no 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 evidence uh, that this was done. Y'all, why is Elihio Bishop, aka Nature Boy, aka Chief Papa John Hot Pocket, aka Chief Administrative Segregation, aka Chief Life in Prison plus ten years without the possibility of parole, glaring at his attorney like that right now? Like, why is he doing that? No evidence uh, that this was done uh, that would be presented before a jury. So I'm, I'm still standing okay. right now. Response to the exhibit. The, it was introduced into evidence in the exhibit, which shows a video of Mr. Bishop's Twitter feed that shows that the posts were pin, posted and pinned on March 27th. Okay. All right. There is sufficient evidence from which a jury can uh, conclude that all that happened on the incident date and in DeKalb County. So I'm going to deny the motions for a directed verdict. There's also evidence um, the state has established venue through multiple witnesses. So. Um, motions are denied. Are there any other matters we need to take up before you call your first witness? I'm, I'm going to call today. Okay, you're ready. Okay. All right, let's bring the drawers back in. Um, I don't know who just um shouted out and laughed or whatever, but anywho, during the process of calling witnesses to the stand it will be muted so i will be clipping out those portions of the video and just starting back when they're sound because i don't know unless y'all want to watch the silent parts of this i don't think so yes I think it just, the state's suggestion is that the court made clear that Mr. Bishop has two options under the I, Sixth Amendment, yeah. and he needs to select from one of those two options. Yes. All right, Mr. Bishop. The options are, one, you can proceed with Mr. Booker. Two, you can fire Mr. Booker, and you can proceed pro se. If you want to do that, I, we have to have a, what's called a Feretta hearing, and I need to advise you on the record of all of the dangers in doing so. Um, the COVID issue has been resolved. The attorneys are fine going forward. The jurors are fine going forward. I'm wearing a mask. It's not an issue. So CDC guidelines are changing. Um, anyway, so that ship has sailed. We are going forward with this trial. We're in the middle of it. Um, if you want to have a, a different attorney, you, you don't get to choose a different attorney in the middle of the trial. We don't stop for you to get a new lawyer. You either proceed with Mr. Booker or you proceed by yourself, period. Two, two choices. That, those, are, those are the only ones you have. Is that on record? Yes, everything is on the record. Okay, I would like to fire my attorney and fire you. Yes, this is the moment that he decided that he wanted to fire Robert Booker and find other counsel to represent him because he felt that Mr. Booker was not doing a great job at defending him. And as I sat there in the courtroom while this was happening, I was like, okay, sugar honey iced tea just got real baby. Yes, everything is on the record. Okay, I would like to fire my attorney and find, and find new okay, counsel. Okay, that is not an option. Okay, do, are you, you're not listening to me, Mr. Bishop. The options are proceed with Mr. Booker or proceed without an attorney. Those are the two options you have at this juncture, period. Without an attorney. Those are the two options you have at this juncture, period. Nobody in the back can help you. Look up, look at me, You're ta I'm talking to you. Two options, proceed with Mr. Booker or proceed pro se and represent yourself, which is a terrible, terrible, terrible idea. Why is that my only two options? That's the law, Mr. Bishop, period. That's the only two options? That's the law, Mr. Bishop, period. Bishop, period. Bishop, period. Bishop, period. That's the law. So I'm not allowed to seek other counsel? Not in the middle of trial, no, sir. Even if I'm not being represented right? S sir, I, that's the ruling. Do not argue with me. Is that on record? Everything is on record, Mr. Bishop. Everything is on the record. So what do you want to do? You either proceed with Mr. Booker or you proceed without an attorney, but we're not stopping the trial for you to get a new lawyer. That's not how this works.
What about the COVID? That's been, we've already discussed that, sir. You have a mask, I have a mask, we have hand sanitizers, the jurors are fine with it, council's fine with it, we are way more than five feet away from each other. I, so that's, you're, you're trying everything you can to not go forward with this trial. But because, I, because I'm not being treated fairly. Okay, I, you are entitled to your opinion, Mr. Bishop, I'm not gonna argue with you, but we are moving forward with the trial. One way or the other. If you don't, if you're concerned about COVID and you want to stay in the back and do not want to participate in the trial, that is also your right. And we'll try you in abstention. That is considered a voluntary absence from court. Really? Really? Because I don't want to be in here and be exposed okay. to COVID. Then you then you can sit in the back and we can try the case in your so house. I don't have a right to have any opinion on this. I, I don't even understand that question. Those being are your like, choices. Meaning my big decision on my behalf. Okay. My Mr. Bishop, this is the last time I'm going to tell you your, your options, okay? As far as counsel, you either proceed with Mr. Booker or you represent yourself, period. You do not get to stop the trial to hire a new attorney. No, number one. Number two, COVID. I've discussed this with counsel. We've mentioned it to the jurors. Everybody is fine with going forward. We have masking in place. We have provided you with the mask. We have hand sanitizer. This has been COVID been going on for four years, folks. We got to figure out how to live with this. Um, we are way more than five feet apart, and the CDC guidelines are in the process of changing anyway with respect to the isolation rules. Okay, well, I haven't changed yet. They are in the process of changing them uh, to eliminate the isolation requirements and just to require masks. I am wearing a mask. I will wear a mask throughout the entire trial. So that if you do not, if you're not comfortable with that and you want to sit in, in lockup during the course of the trial, that is your right. And that will be considered a voluntary absence from the proceeding. Will I be able to hear what's going on? Nope, we don't have, there's no feed back there. Nope, you wouldn't be able to hear it. So, so it's up to you. So. Two choices, sir, proceed or it's go in the back. That's it. And this is on record? Everything, yes, everything is on record. Everything I'm saying is on the record. So the appellate courts can hear it. If they think I handled it improperly, they'll have their discretion to do whatever they deem appropriate. So you need to decide now what you're doing. Do you, want to, do you want to stay in the courtroom for the remainder of the proceeding, Mr. Bishop, and participate in this trial? Participate? Yes. Testify, not testify, so, be here so when about, witnesses testify. So whether I'm here or not, this is going to go forward. Yes, that is correct. That is correct. Who will be representing me if I fire my lawyer? You. You will represent yourself. Those okay, are your and, and if I represent myself and not choose to be in the court, then who will represent then who Nobody. Will Nobody. Okay, well, I'll let the fire my turn and not be in court. Okay. All right, so that means if that is the case, you want to fire Mr. Booker and you want to remain in the courtroom. I mean, excuse me, you want to remain in lockup, correct? Yes. Okay, so that means there will be no, if you fire Mr. Booker, that means no witnesses are going to testify on your behalf. We will have no, we will be presenting no evidence and we will move right into the closing arguments. So are you saying that I'm not, I'm not allowed to defend myself? No, she isn't. That's not what I'm saying at all. You have a right to defend yourself. You have Mr. Booker here who again is doing an outstanding job on your behalf. Not in my, not in my, not in my okay. I, I told you your options. So decide what you want to do. Do you want to go talk to your client in the back? Okay, let's take five minutes. Yeah, I ain't even finna hold y'all, but y'all could have bought me for a penny when this moment happened in the court. A whole penny, y'all. Because I was like, he done lost his mind. What? He trying to fire his attorney and represent himself? And now he don't even want to be in the courtroom? And don't worry about it now, um, cameraman. And Mr. Bishop, it is what it is. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Bishop. That is not your fault. <laughs> And it's not your fault. I, it is what it is. 
And we do have masks for anybody in the gallery who wants to wear one. We put them there for folks. All right, so now let's go get uh, Mr. This, oh, is somebody getting him? I'm going to take full advantage of this brief intermission and take care of a few housekeeping items. Guys, have you smashed the heck out of that like button yet? If you haven't, please do so now. Thank you in advance. All right, Ms. Thomas, yes. um, I know Mr. Covey had to step out for a second. Are you okay with me proceeding? I am. Okay. All right, Mr. There, Bunker. Because we've had a chance to speak in the back, uh, my client out for about the past five minutes. Um, he uh, does not desire to be present uh, because he's concerned about COVID. He wants, he's okay with going forward with the presentation, but he does not feel like he has much of a choice. Uh, in the matter, he's concerned for his physical well-being. He does not want to be uh, in absentia uh, in his own trial, so I think he's going to remain here uh, on the side, but he's indicated it's not my will. Okay, understood. Um, okay, then we're going to proceed. Mr. Coveney, are we good? Yes. Okay, all right, let's bring... So there was a, yeah, thank you. There was an issue, somebody emailed uh, some YouTube footage of someone walking around outside, I believe during lunch yesterday, and apparently was discussing the case in the presence of other folks. I don't know if it was um, any jurors or witnesses, someone indicated to this individual that was doing recording, please don't talk about the case in front of me or around me. I don't know who it was. I haven't gotten any reports from the jurors. I'll remind the jurors if anybody's talking about the case in their presence to let me know. Nobody, um, no one has reported anything. So I'm just going to instruct those of you who are here observing, if you want to continue to observe, I suggest you not be um, discussing and posting stuff about the case during lunch or during the breaks outside where folks can overhear you. Um, I believe the Sheriff's Department has already located that individual and um, has removed him from the remaining of the proceedings. So that's what will happen. And Judge, I would add that that person, they also attacked two of my witnesses outside as well. Is it um, the same person? The same person. Uh, so, okay. you know, I don't know if the purpose, their purpose was to try to intimidate my witnesses. My witnesses are here, okay. and they're those who are. Okay. Uh, but I just wanted to make sure that that was on record. Okay. Well, folks aren't going to be able to come in the courtroom if they're going to behave like that. That's... Okay, um, anything else we need to take up? All right, bring the jurors in, and let's get started with your first witness. Call your next witness. Call your first witness. Frank Judge, the defense call is Daniel. Okay. So once all of Elihio Bishop, a.k.a. Nature Boy's shenanigans were over and he decided to proceed with his current counsel, they went ahead and called their first witness, which just so happened to be the alleged victim. I think Mr. Booker was going to make an attempt to discredit her as a witness, but unfortunately, that didn't work for them. I have previously testified in this case, correct? Yes. Okay, I'm recalling you as a witness and a defense case in chief. Um, and I wanted to go back and review some of the statements that you made uh, to law enforcement. Okay. Now, the very first time after March 24th, 2022, that you reported um, the revenge porn, did you go down and do a warrant application at the DeKalb County Magistrate Court? Yeah, I went to the, the police department mm -hmm. and I stayed in front of them, uh, in front of them, mm -hmm. and I did a police report with a cop. Okay. All right. So you didn't go to the Magistrate Court. You went and spoke to this, the investigator. 
to Officer Hugh. Yes. Okay. And so you told him uh, that revenge porn had been posted online. Yes. And you made a report with him. Yes. Okay. And that was on March the 30th of 2022. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, at that time, you didn't say anything about uh, a sexual assault or anything about rape. Is that that's correct? That's correct. Okay. And your interview or your meeting with that officer was a recorded uh, meeting, correct? Yes, it was. Okay. And that was within five days of the time uh, that you had left the house, correct? Um, more or less. More, okay. actually more. I okay. Believe, yes. So, March 25th is when you left the house, the morning of March 25th? Yeah, yes. Okay. All right. Um, now, while I'm on that, you uh, had text messages that were in your phone that were sent from your phone uh, to Kelly Johnson. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And were the messages provided to law enforcement from you? Uh, did they get them from your phone? Um, I believe I asked Kelly for the screenshots, and I believe I sent them to someone. I'm not sure who. Okay. Um, I, I believe I sent them to... So I, I can't remember. I apologize. Okay. All right. So after you uh, were um, questioned and reported to the officer on March the 30th, mm -hmm. after that, the next time that you made a statement uh, about this case was an interview that you did online with a, a YouTube YouTuber called The T, correct? Yes. Okay. And do you recall your interview with The T? Yes. I ain't even finna hold y'all, but I didn't understand Robert Booker's reasoning behind bringing up the interview that the victim in this case did with the T. By the way, shouts out to the T. She has been covering carbonation for a number of years. She's an amazing person. I met her in person at the trial. So yeah, she's cool peoples. But I didn't understand why Robert Booker felt the need to bring that up because, quite honestly, his own client in his interrogation with DeKalb County Police admitted that she said no. So, you know, interview, she could have done an interview, she could have done a world tour. His client said that she said no. Okay. And do you recall your interview with the team? Yes, I do. Okay. Were you truthful in your interview with the team? Um, I would say I was truthful to my best abilities. Okay. I just came from out the cult. Okay. So I still had an influence on okay. me. Yes. All right. Okay. Uh, so when you were interviewed by the team, uh, did you, do you recall discussing with the team why you had left uh, Carbon Nation? Um... I don't recall what I said, but I do know why I left. Okay. All right. Um, if I asked you, read you a statement that you made from your interview with the T, uh, would you tell me if you disagree or agree with that statement? Yes, to my best abilities. Okay. Um, in your interview with the T, uh, do you remember what date you did that interview? No. Okay. Now, um, are you aware that the T is the same group of people that sent those text messages to um, the detective in this case? Uh, sure. All right. All right. Did you provide a text message to the T? Did I? Excuse me? Did you provide text messages to the T? Me and her text all the time, yes. Okay. But did you provide the text messages with you and Kelly Johnson to the T? I may have. Okay. All right. Um... So I'm going to read you, uh, this is a transcript of your statements from YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, I left Carbonation because basically he didn't hit me, but I was hit by Zoku, Eferu, and Shiva did push me and nudge me and was getting up in my face as well as the reason why this happened. It's because they feel as if I was being disrespectful to him by giving him a face. Does that sound like something that you said? Absolutely, yes. Okay. Now, in your interview, further, um, you talk more about, you know, what you said that happens. Uh, and, and did you call Mr. Bishop something along the lines of Babaji? I'm not exactly sure how to spell that, but do you know how to spell that? How do you spell that? 
B-A-B-A-J-I. Okay. Um, and so, did you have, was there a girl in the group named um, Malia? Yes. Was Malia considered to be the queen? Yes. Were you frustrated by Malia being the queen? No. Okay. I'm going to read you, uh, again, you tell me if you disagree with this, take it from your interview. Um, can I explain my answer? Yeah, once I, if I can read it first and you tell me. Yeah, it's, let me read the question, then you answer the question, and then you can explain your answer. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, all right, use Nateri as a servant and con and come tomorrow she's going to be the servant and this and that and i'm just like wow like really and one of the reasons why i left is because y'all don't know when he was trying to do the queen thing that wasn't going to be a new queen it was all an act at first it wasn't i'm thinking that i'm actually have a shot a chance to like prove that okay well i can i can definitely you know take the queen uh, to the queen thing and really do something positive with the cup, but nah, he was like, it was never going to be that way. He said that it's going to be criminally a queen, queen, she's going to be, she's going to remain the queen. And so, do, and I'm going to skip forward, I'm going to be her servant, I'm going to be her servant, I'm going to kiss her feet in front of the whole world. <coughs> Did you have an issue with her being the queen and you not being the queen? I had an issue with the dynamic and the triangulation. Um, excuse me if I'm not saying that right, but triangulation that Elio Bishop was doing with the women in the cult. Okay. Um, I decided that after he himself, Elio Bishop, was telling me behind closed doors that I might be the queen. Are you really the queen of combination, Terry? Can you do this job? Are you meant for this job? And he's had countless encounters in front of everyone saying that I was qualified and I was more of a um, goddess than the other women. I thought I could take the queen role and do something positive with our culture that we was creating in the group. Um, I didn't like I didn't like how he put the women against each other and made them jealous of me because um, he would always tell the women that he liked to be better than the other ones. I thought I could change the dynamic of the queen because he, like I said, he never hit me. But I thought I could change it. It was a lot of abuse, yes, mental and you know, emotional abuse. But, but, I he, thought, but he never hit you though. No, and I thought that I could change that dynamic. So I wanted to become the queen so I can make a change like I was naturally doing in the cult. Okay. So being that he, he never hit you, you, how long were you in the group? Uh, I was on and off in the group for three years. Okay. And um, when it came down to uh, Elihio Bishop, though he's never hit me physically, uh, the mental and emotional abuse and a phys the uh, spiritual abuse was always present. Okay. All right. Um, so I'm going to skip through this section, but essentially you talk about the girls and you are having a dispute. So do you agree that night that the girls and you, that they, the girls were basically being physical with you? Yes, they were physical on Alihio Bishop's orders. Okay. And well, I'm going to get to that. But go ahead, you can address Yes, also I wanted to tell you before when you said um, I'm going to kiss her feet, mm -hmm. he told the world that, or he told the cult and I was going to kiss her feet. I never said to my mouth that I wanted to kiss her feet. He okay. was gonna, he was ordering me to kiss her feet the next day. He said that I was gonna kiss her feet in front of the whole world and become slave to coronation. Okay, and you, you wanted to be the queen, you didn't want to be in that position? I necessarily was just trying to take the role so I can become something positive in the group. My queen, the queen position was something used for power and control when it comes down to the women and to make them jealous of each other and compete against one another. Um, I just wanted to take the role because I wanted to make a change within my culture. Okay. All right. Do you disagree with the following statement you made? Babaji, that's Elijah, who comes in and he's like, are you okay? 
And I told him no. And he was like, you know what? You can just go pack your stuff because uh, you can just make it clean and simple. Make it, just, just make it. You know, basically he's saying that don't make a fuss about it, just pack it and just get out. And so you at that point when he got your suitcases and you were about to leave, right? No, I didn't go get my suitcases. Uh, one of the men fetched my suitcases. <laughs> okay, and then the next day you you said I would. I would have to object at this point. These are not statements. They're prior statements, and they are not statements in contradiction to what she testified to the first time. If they were, then it would be proper under Rule Four Thirteen. But instead, we're just rehashing an out of court statement. Here's it. Because you agree, Mr. Booker. Okay. All right. Sustain the objection. Let's move on. Okay. Um, do you recall that during the interview that you indicated that you went upstairs and that you were just crying in his arms? Yes. Okay. Again, same objection. That was well, testified to on direct. I can just play the interview into the record then, Judge. I mean, that's what the state wants. The interview is not admissible. No, we can't. Um, I sustain the objection, move forward. Well, she hasn't been asked the question. This is not questions that she's been asked before. So it wouldn't be something that would be a prior consistent or inconsistent statement. She's not been asked these particular questions before regarding the specifics of what happened when she was there. Response? Unfortunately, I think this is another matter we have to talk okay. about. So All, right. <laughs> All right. Sorry, guys. Um, good guy. <laughs> So they had to go on ahead and excuse the jury so that the defense and prosecution could further discuss these particular questions and Mr. Booker could present his argument as to the relevance of these questions before they could proceed forward with the trial. Um. Um, all right. The state's position is that unless it is a, so in the prior interview, if she said something that was contradicted in court, then it is a prior statement that could come in under 413 as a prior inconsistent statement. The subsection that deals with prior consistent statements would not apply to any of this because Mr. Booker is not attempting to restore the witness's credibility. So prior consistent statements are inapplicable. Prior inconsistent statements are only applicable in as much as they are actually inconsistent with what the witness has testified to, in which case the statement is not, do you, the question is not, do you agree with this statement that you made? It's, do you remember making this statement? And at that point, she can either say yes, no, or explain the statement. Okay. Here's the, the rule. Yeah, I'll rephrase it based on that. Okay. I mean, the rule is, um, An out of court statement should not be hearsay if the declarant testifies at the trial or hearing, is subject to cross concerning the statement, and the statement is admissible as a prior inconsistent statement or a prior consistent statement. It has to be one or the other. Do you agree with that? Yes, and then prior inconsistent statement and prior consistent statement are defined further Correct. in Rule 413. Correct. Because we, not, right. So not every statement that is consistent with a witness's testimony is admissible. It's only admissible under certain circumstances. So I'll ask her if she recalls- Use your mic for me, please. I'm sorry. I'll ask her if she recalls making the statement uh, and then we can give her an opportunity to, I, the questions that I'm asking her were not questions. I never asked her about the interview. It, it was not anything that was asked on the, when during her examination. So this is all brand new question. <clears throat> so what are, you, what are you trying to get at? I mean that she did a team interview that was different than the okay. that she made it before it would be against this thing. I would just ask that we address these specific questions based on how this has gone yeah. previously where it, we have not been on the same page at all about what constitutes a prior okay. inconsistency. All right, let's go ahead and ask the questions now, Mr. Booker, and get the witnesses to answer and any objection so we don't have to keep sending the jurors in and out. It would be my preference that we don't, could we do without asking, without the jury being present? Because I mean, what's the point of asking? Well, then you can ask it again when the jury comes in if it's not objectionable. But the problem is that there's an objection. The witness. The witness, right? Yeah. 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 That's fine. You want to, okay. So I, I can proffer the questions that I would intend to ask at the court. Is that acceptable? Yes. Thank <laughs> you.
All right. Um, she states in the interview, Judge, that she doesn't know what happened in that moment. She was really vulnerable. Um, that she that we did make love in that moment. Um, I didn't want to resist him. I didn't want to like you know because any of that because it was just like I was gonna resist him. Uh, the Uber's already left, but I just felt stupid and I decided to make love to him. And that wasn't what she ultimately said, Judge. I think that's a very point, big point in this case, is whether or not she decided to make love to him or not. Wouldn't that be a prior inconsistent statement, Ms. Cody? Most of that, yes. Okay. But that was not what we were, right. we were dancing all around that. Like, okay. Yes, that specific. So I will jump right to the point instead of going through the entire thing. And are there any more? Are there any others? Or is that essentially what you're trying to do? Uh, just there is. Uh, there is a bit more to it. Um, additionally, she indicates in the interview uh, that she felt stupid afterwards, uh, that she had given in, that, and I'm going to use a word that would be offensive to most people, but I want to say it, that she was about having dick rather than love. Uh, I think that that's a valid question that the jury gets to determine. Uh, it, she doesn't mention anything about being forced. So instead of me going through reading the transcript uh, verbatim, piece by piece, what I can do is just question her out of it um, and ask if she recalls making that statement or not. And if she disagrees, then I will read it into the record. And if she agrees, uh, you move on. If she agrees, I'll move on. With, with those two with those questions, questions I, think, I, I do believe those constitute prior inconsistent statements. So I think those are fine. I ain't even finna hold y'all, but I was sitting there like, why is Elegio Bishop, aka Nature Boy, waving down Robert Booker like he hailing him a taxi cab in the middle of New York? I think those are fine. Um, oh, your client is trying to get your attention, Mr. Booker. Hold on, Mr. Bishop. Additionally, Judge, she indicated that she felt the lovemaking was fake, uh, but it and it made her feel sad as a result of that. Um, I think that would be a question that I could be able to answer as well because again, she addresses love and hate. The fact that she had, the fact that she, we addressed actually on direct of her first testimony, the fact that she has used the phrase love me, <laughs> that was addressed already. So this would not be an inconsistent statement with her trial testimony. In fact, it would be Consistent. Yeah, but she the fact that she felt he was faking it during the lovemaking, she never mentioned that. that was, I don't mentioned. recall that being asked by counsel on cross the first time. Around. It wasn't. Okay. I mean, all right. I, if you want to ask those three, what, three questions, mm -hmm. yes, that's sir. fine. I think that's fine. Okay. And then can we move on from there? Or are there uh, more? There's there's an additional question I would ask. Right, that, that's okay. not that's not from the T interview. Okay. Does Would it you? address a prior statement made by the witness? No, it's, it was a subsequent statement she made that the court that the DA's office interviewed her, uh, and she indicated that they could have sex just one last time, and she said okay to that. That's exactly what she testified to on direct. Well, I, I think we disagree. That's, that's your opinion of what she testified to on the record. I think I have an opportunity because I'm, I have a legal obligation to represent this defendant to ask her to be clear in front of the jury. That, that's their opinion. That's exactly what she said on the record. I don't agree with that. I, I remember her saying she can, she was convinced, I think, to do it. Um, well, I, I guess if the state wants to go that route, then maybe they should, in their closing argument, they should argue that she said it was okay to have sex uh, together. That's the contention. I don't think that's what they're going to argue closing arguments. Uh, so I, if I'm going to be, I, I think I would be able to ask that question, Judge. They provided this. She told the DA's office. In an interview with them, prepare for trial. I mean, look, it's no secret that she didn't report it right away and she's given conflicting statements, right? So yes, if I may, then, okay. just one thing. You talk about, well, in my opening statement, where I laid out what I expected the evidence to show, 
He asked one last time, and finally, after countless times of saying no, realized that she wasn't leaving that room unless she gave in, she said okay. So I've, I've addressed it in opening. It's what she testified to. I'm not saying it's the most prejudicial thing in the world. I'm saying it's inadmissible because it's not inconsistent with what... It, that's your opening statement. We're dealing, okay. The jury doesn't need to consider your opening statement. They need to consider that true. testimony of this witness. Correct. That's true. Correct. Um, all right. So we have this statement to the DA's office. Those other three questions that you want to ask. Yes, sir. And that's it. Yes, sir. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to define my question in advance now so that way when I ask it. So, number one, um, that she felt like she was um, vulnerable at that time. And so, therefore, um, they had sex and she didn't resist. Is that a fair question? The state okay with that? And this is what she told T? This is what she told the T. If it's, I think that's appropriate. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Additionally, that she felt that the defendant uh, was faking it during uh, the love making and she felt um, that it, he wasn't being genuine and true as a result. As long as Mr. Kutcher, do you recall making this statement, not do you believe this statement or do you yeah. All right. And then <coughs> what she really needed at that time was dick, um, but what she really wanted was real true love. I think that's been addressed one way or the other, so I would defer to the court. Okay, I think it's been addressed, or you do not think it's been addressed? It has not. I don't, I don't remember her saying that. Yeah. No, we would remember her saying that. I, yeah, I do not remember her, she did not say that. So, um, that's, I, so I'm going to say no to that question, because that's not a prior consistent statement. It would be a prior inconsistent judge. How is it inconsistent? What is it inconsistent with? The rape? Yes, it's inconsistent with the rape, because she needed to have sex with him rather than not. Mr. Kennedy, what was your response to that? I think he said it was okay with it, but maybe I'm wrong. I just, I don't see how it can be inconsistent based on, like, the absence of testimony. I mean, it's, it's not consistent or inconsistent. It's just not something that came up in her testimony. Okay, well, could she be asked if she recalls that statement? If she doesn't recall it, then we'll leave it be. Yes, this was their defense. This was the defense that Elihio Bishop, aka Nature Boy, wanted his attorney, Robert Booker, to present. This was the defense. Even after the prosecution played his 45 plus minute interrogation with the Cab County police detectives in which he actually confirmed that the victim said no but this this was their defense this was robert booker's rabbits okay all right so we have this statement to the da's office the Brady, the Brady statement, Judge, which I think the state is agreeable to, and that would be the four questions I would have about that. So I wouldn't ask any more questions about that particular issue. Brady statement is the one statement that we are objecting to because we believe that it has already been testified to, but I think the court already resolved that defense is fit. That would be the four questions that have been I'm sorry, the Brady statement? The Brady statement uh, which the state provided was that Mr. Bishop indicated to her just one last time and his new response was, okay. That is the, the, the linchpin of our entire case is whether a rape happened or not. Um, and that statement, the state says, well, I believe she did say that. My position is, I don't think she said it clearly. I think I have the right to question her on it. I won't ask her anything else beyond that. 
right. Mr. Pepper? I get to cross on the entire event again, right? Yep. Yep, you sure do. Okay. All right. This thing is yours. After this very lengthy argument presented by the defense, as well as the prosecution, Judge Stacy Heydrich has ruled to allow Mr. Booker to ask his three questions. Guys, if you haven't done so already, do me a favor. Go on ahead and smash that like button for me one time. Not really sure why the cameraman cut out the audio to this part of the stream, but while I have you here, I want to say welcome to all of my new subscribers, to all of my OGs, my day ones, my ride or dies. Y'all already know what it is. Big up yourself. We in the building with it. Replay gang gang. Y'all know why rocks with the replay gang gang. And oh, Bush babies, how y'all doing? Hey y'all. Y'all, come on up out of them bushes. Subscribe. Did ...that the trial needs to recess until Thursday morning because of the COVID positive, despite um, counsel and jurors and everybody it, be wanting to go forward. So I will respect the process, and we are going to, uh, as not this trial, we are going to recess until Thursday morning at 9 o'clock. Um, which will have, which will be consistent with the CDC guidelines for that are still in place regarding um, isolation. So that's where we are, and I'm going to bring the jurors out and excuse them until Thursday. Okay, guys. So I figured out why the cameraman muted the audio. He was attempting to protect the privacy and health information of the individual who caught the vid during the trial. I'm going to end this one on a note that is fire. I'm ending with a new freestyle created by Aaron Dixon, aka True. Many of you know him as True. He is an ex-carbonation member and um, he just wanted to drop a few bars on them so check this out y'all it's my new favorite song by the way nobody wants you in prison prison is for motherfucking karma so a bitch would be in there for something they didn't do for karma they paying off from something shit they did ain't no mistakes bitch you right where you supposed to be to the remaining members i hope you're free your mind life without parole that's a mighty long time a reason to feel bad is gonna be hard to find especially for a nigga who record his own crime ocean breeze and palm trees is what he sold it as disease and false prophecy is what came to pass no time to critically think you're moving too fast bald head looking like who cut the grass one significant factor i think is really funny it's how you speak out against jaws but want all the money playing god ended you as the ultimate dummy it's a rap for the three nickname that boy the mummy zero three zero one twenty four my favorite day the citizens of the cab man they ain't come to play now your messiah would never see the light of day if babylon is so bad how long you plan to stay what do you want to call me a murderer for i've never killed anyone become an act of revolutionary suicide your only chance to evacuate is to leave with us ha. one two karma came for you three four police knocked down the door five six you were scared in a bitch sam eight georgia sealed your fate nigga Bitch. See, see, like, you don't get away with nothing, man. You 
gotta be honest and be straight up and shit. Straight up.